So our next uh, guest speaker uh, joins us from uh, Switzerland. Uh, his name is Mark Dident. He's the manager uh, at the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Um, Mark, Mr. Dident will tell us how your company can contribute to the sustainable development goals and how your company can use a new, new, new tool called SDG Compass in assessing its impacts in the society. Hello, good morning, Mark. Can you hear me all right? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Um, I've just introduced you to the audience, so please um, feel free to start your presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And in case you can't hear me well, please do feel free to interrupt, but um, otherwise I will just keep on going. So good, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to present the SDG Compass, uh, the Guide for Business Action on SDG, at your conference. I'm Mark Didden. I work at the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. So before uh, we dive into the Compass, um, let's move to slide number two, and I'll, I'll spend a few words of introduction about the organization that I represent. The WBCSD is based in Geneva. Uh, we're a CEO-led organization of uh, approximately 200 global uh, forward-thinking companies. Uh, and we aim to galvanize the global business community to create a sustainable future for business, society and the environment. We've been around for 20 years now. Um, and our work programs are aligned to work towards our vision 2050, uh, which is a publication that we did in 2010. And that describes a world uh, in 2050 of 9 billion people living well within the limits of the planet. Um, and that's what we try to achieve. And we have arranged our work in nine priority areas, uh, such as climate change, water, uh, social impact, etc., uh, that are informed by science. Um, so so that, that's on WBCSD. Moving right away to slide number three about the SDG Compass. The SDG Compass is a guide for companies on how they can align their strategies and measure and manage their contribution to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, that were recently launched at uh, the United Nations in New York. It's a partnership project with uh, GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, based in Amsterdam, UN Global Compact, and the WBCSD. The guide has been developed uh, over the last year, um, including the, the end of 2014, and we've received feedback through three consultation periods. Uh, two of those consultation periods were for members of our organizations only, but the last consultation was, was open to anyone who wanted to provide input, and we did receive quite a lot of feedback from non-business uh, stakeholders as well. And the final product was launched um, last month, so the 26th of September, at the United Nations Private Sector Forum. That took place in the context of the Sustainable Development Summit at the United Nations. Moving to slide number four. A few words about the Sustainable Development Goals themselves. As most of you may know, the SDGs uh, succeed the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs. The MDGs were planned to run from 2000 until 2015 and the SDGs will run until uh, 2030. So they will set the global development agenda for the coming 15 years. Contrary to the MDGs, who were mostly developed by uh, governments and for governments, the SDGs have been developed uh, with input from non-state actors as well, including business. Um, and they also have an explicit call for um, uh, actors other than governments to contribute to the implementation of the SDGs. Um, and, and also business has a key role to play there. The goals are universally applicable for developing and developed countries alike. And we expect that governments will translate them into national action plans, policies and initiatives, of course reflecting the different realities and uh, capacities that, that each country possesses. Um, they were formally adopted the 25th of September um, at the UN uh, summit, um, and as I said, they will form the global development agenda until 2030. 
The SDG is comprised um, of, of 17 goals with 169 targets uh, below them. This is different as well from the MDGs. Uh, that was a much smaller set, uh, more focused. For the SDGs, it, it, it was decided to be much more all-encompassing, and I do believe they are um, collectively exhaustive, even if they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. Um, going to slide number five. As I mentioned, um, business is a vital partner in achieving the SDGs. Um, the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, he uh, called on companies to contribute through their core activities and uh, asks them to assess their impacts and ambitious goals and communicate transparently about the results. But also in the in the green box on the left, uh, there's a, a paragraph from, in fact, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which is the official document that contains the Sustainable Development Goals. And there it explicitly calls on all businesses to apply their creativity and innovation to solving sustainable development challenges. So there's an explicit call to business in the SDGs. Um, and we also know that um, um, the, the, the companies, especially leading companies, can, dem can demonstrate how the businesses help advance sustainable development, uh, both by minimizing their negative impacts and maximizing their positive impacts on people and the planet. So business has a role to play in, the, in achieving the SDGs, but going to slide number six, there's also a clear benefit for companies that uh, put the SDGs at the heart of their strategy. Um, in the SDG Compass, we identified five elements that sort of comprise a business case uh, for companies to align uh, their strategies with the SDGs. Um, I, I will quickly mention all the five, the five points before moving on. So the, the first point, of course, is that um, the SDGs will identify, will help identify future business opportunities. We expect that um, the SDGs will um, redirect global and uh, public and private investment flows towards the challenges that they represent. So in doing so, they, they will likely define growing markets for companies that can deliver innovative solutions. For example, um, energy efficient products or affordable healthcare solutions, uh, water purification, etc., etc. So that's the first element. The, the second element of the business case for companies to engage with the SDGs is that it's expected to enhance the value of corporate sustainability. So we know already that the business case for corporate sustainability has been established. We, we know that resource efficiency and energy efficiency will uh, have a positive impact on, on the environment and will save you money as well. But we expect that the SDGs may strengthen the economic incentives uh, for, for such resource efficiency measures. Um, as externalities become increasingly internalized. So maybe in achieving the SDGs, uh, someday a global carbon price will be adopted, which will improve the business case for low carbon solutions. And similar um, um, efforts may be taken for, for the other SDGs as well to help strengthen that business case. So the third element is um, strengthening stakeholder relations and keeping the pace with policy developments. Uh, the SDGs do reflect uh, stakeholder expectations and will also likely inform future policy direction as, as countries will start to implement um, uh, programs towards achieving the SDGs. So companies that align their priorities with the SDGs will likely strengthen the engagement of their customers, employees, governments and other stakeholders. And companies that don't may face increasing reputational but also legal risks. The fourth element why companies um, can benefit from uh, helping to contribute to SDGs is that it helps stabilize markets and societies. Clearly, businesses cannot succeed in societies that fail. So if you invest in the achievement of the SDGs, companies will support pillars of business, business success, like rules-based markets, transparent financial systems, and non-corrupt and well-governed institutions. And finally, the SDGs form a common language and shared purpose. So corporate sustainability isn't a different thing last month as it was today after the SDGs were adopted. But what the SDGs do bring is this common language and a shared set of priorities. So we believe that if companies engage with the SDGs and report explicitly on their contribution to them, this will benefit uh, the stakeholders in, in their reporting to stakeholders. It will be um, easier for companies to explain 
which areas they prioritize, what they are working on, and it will be easier for stakeholders to understand this. In addition, we, we expect that the goals as they are this shared framework, this global framework for sustainable development, they can help bring together partners uh, to address the world's most urgent challenges. So those five elements are, are reasons why we think companies should take an interest in the SDGs. Moving to slide number seven, there's um, some results from a survey that PwC recently published, um, which showed some interesting results, uh, mainly that most businesses are aware of the SDGs, but they don't have the tools they need. If you look on the left-hand side, it shows that 92% of businesses are aware of the SDGs and they realize that it probably means something for them and that there's maybe something that they should be doing about it. But only 13% on the right-hand side have identified the tools that they need to really engage. Um, and this really shows why we developed the SDG Compass and how that can help companies to put the tools, tools and knowledge um, uh, they need to put sustainability at the heart of their strategy. Another interesting result is that the middle two bars where it says that 72% of, of businesses say that they are planning to take action on the SDGs, but in fact only 29% uh, are setting goals already that are aligned with the SDGs. And this is something that we encourage companies to do as well in the SDG compass. Moving to slide number eight. The SDG compass guide itself is built around five steps. Um, going from understanding what the SDGs are to defining your priorities, setting goals, integrating and reporting and communicating. And those steps should then be periodically repeated, sort of a plan, do, check, act, cycle um, way of thinking. That's one element of the SDG Compass, the guide with the five steps, and I, I will explain each of the steps in a little bit more detail uh, as we go on. The SDG Compass also has a number of online resources that, um, that help support the guide. So one of those resources is an uh, inventory of existing business indicators uh, that we mapped against the 17 SDGs and their 169 targets. So what companies um, can do if they know, for instance, that SDG target 6.3 is, is, of, is, is of great interest for their company, they can go to our website, sddcompass.org, um, look at that target, and it will show which business indicators companies are already using uh, to report progress against that SDG target. And this also underlines that companies are already doing a lot of these things already, even if they may not know it. And this will also help companies understand um, how they can use their existing business indicators to report against SDGs. Uh, we've made a similar inventory for business tools that we mapped against the SDGs. So this is a, a second inventory that is on our website. Again, here, if a company realizes, okay, I think SDG 5 is an important one for me and I want to understand better what my impact is. Then you can go to our website, uh, look at SDG 5 and this will list a number of um, impact assessment and reporting tools um, that already exist and that the company can apply to to better understand its impact. Also here we've used the principle when developing the SDG Compass to build on existing work as much as possible. A lot of work already exists in impact assessment and reporting. The SDG Compass does not want to invent anything new. It's a very crowded space, but we'd rather put those uh, tools and methodologies in the context of the SDGs. And then the final resource that, that supports the SDG Compass guide is a two-page overview for each SDG that sort of explains what the SDG is, is about, what the role of business is in achieving the SDG, and also some examples of business solutions to get a more um, concrete flavor of, of what it can mean to uh, to engage. So now I'll go through the five steps um, in a little bit more detail before I close. So uh, on slide number nine, uh, the first step is um, for companies to understand the SDGs. Um, clearly they need to have some understanding what the SDGs are, how they've been developed, that there's a call for business to, uh, to, uh, to contribute. Uh, the business case is very important, of course, to get uh, um, uh, the decision to, to engage as a company. And, and companies are also um, advised in the SG Compass to be aware of, of what we call baseline responsibilities for business. Um, so all the five steps of the SDG Compass rest on, on a recognition that, that there is a baseline responsibility 
uh, for all companies to comply, of course, with all relevant legislation to respect international standards and also to always address as a priority uh, all negative human rights impacts. Uh, so this is almost a disclaimer uh, section where we say in, in, in the following step you will identify your priorities and take action, but of course this all needs to rest on this on this baseline responsibility, so that, that's what the third bullet means. On the slide number 10, after companies have um, uh, familiarized themselves with the SDGs and, and have taken the decision to, uh, uh, to see if they can contribute, the, the second step of the SDG Compass is defining priorities. So clearly, 17 goals with 169 targets is much too much for any company to build a meaningful strategy around. And it's very important for companies to understand where um, they can have the biggest uh, either positive or negative impact uh, and where they can prioritize their action accordingly. Um, so a number of actions that we recommend in this chapter are to map your value chain, to identify impact areas, then to select indicators and collect data, and from that define your priorities. So one of the key messages is illustrated uh, on, on the picture on the right hand side where there's um, a conceptual uh, picture of a, of a value chain from raw materials to suppliers to you know company operations and product use end of life and we really encourage companies to take this value chain perspectives don't look only at your own operations or only at your products but look at the entire value chain and think about for each SDG uh, where in the value chain you can have a either uh, negative or positive current or potential impact uh, and, and prioritize accordingly so for example maybe a company knows that uh, their suppliers have a lot of um, uh, water intense operations. So they may identify as a priority area to, to minimize this negative impact on water consumption by working with their suppliers and, and reducing water consumption and water stress regions uh, in their supply base. But another company may also identify that um, in fact they have a big impact for the downstream in their value chain from the use of their products. They, it may be an electronics company that um, um, produces uh, goods that, that consume electricity. So by innovating and investing in energy efficiency, they can contribute to SDG 13, uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions um, by making their products more energy efficient. So that's the, the, the way of thinking we want to convey with the SDG Compass value chain approach and identifying priorities. So on the next slide, slide 11, after a company uh, has identified those priority areas to, uh, uh, to, to scale up action, we, we recommend companies to set goals um, um, through a few actions, so defining the scope uh, of your goals and, and selecting KPIs. We, uh, of course, recommend companies to look at the areas of, of high impact that were identified in the second step. Um, define a baseline, select goal types. Maybe you want to have an absolute goal or a relative goal. Um, an absolute goal would be reduce your CO2 emissions by by 10% uh, uh, by 2017. And a relative goal could be uh, uh, reduce your CO2 emissions uh, per unit of output uh, by 2017, by X percent. Then set your level of ambition and uh, companies may consider to announce their commitment to the SDGs on the UN website. One of the key messages here is uh, is on setting ambition. Typically, companies setting goals would do a benchmark and they would look at historic performance uh, and then decide if they want to be a bit more or less ambitious than their competitors and, and set an incremental improvement goal, uh, you know, like 5% CO2 reduction uh, by next year. But we also know that if we add up all corporate goals uh, together, this is not enough to meet society's uh, challenges. So what do we recommend companies to, to be aware of an emerging trend in goal setting, which is called outside-in goal setting or sometimes science-based goal setting where we encourage companies to look at the ambition that the SDGs represent. Uh, they're a unique set of goals that all governments have signed up on. Um, they, they set concrete targets by 2020 and 2030 and we encourage companies to look at the SDGs on which they can have the biggest impact, uh, assess what those SDGs try to achieve by 2020 and 2030, um, try to understand their um, sort of fair share of, the, of this goal and, and set their goals accordingly in the long term and then translate this back into short term goals. Um, 
this, this area of work has advanced a little bit more in climate change than in other areas. There is this science-based targets initiative on climate change that companies can use. But even in the absence of, of, of robust methodologies, we still encourage companies to, uh, to take this outside in approach when setting goals. Uh, on slide 12, um, after a company has set, has set their goals on, on the priority areas identified, uh, SD Compass um, has some, some language on how companies can, can achieve those goals by anchoring the sustainability goals within the organization. So make sure that the sustainability goals are at par with uh, the more traditional goals of, of uh, increasing top line growth or increasing profitability, etc. Make sure it's on the corporate management agenda because we know as long as it's only a side activity in, in a sustainability office, uh, it will never achieve the scale that's, that's needed. So it, it needs to be uh, also fully embedded across all functions. What we mean with this is that once you've set your goal um, at a corporate level to, for instance, on, on the picture on the right, you see the example of contributing to SDG 12, maybe this is a KPI to, uh, to contribute to SD 12 by phasing out all harmful chemicals in your product by 2020. Um, this then has implications, for example, for your um, supply management function, where uh, supply management should be made responsible to identify and phase out where possible all harmful chemicals in purchased products and components. But then even further down in the organization, this um, supply chain management uh, target should be translated into individual targets for each component purchaser to make sure that, um, you know, all his supply accounts comply with purchasing policy on harmful chemicals. So we try to show that the goals should be part of the overall goals of the organization, but the departments and individuals responsible for implementing those goals should be made responsible for them. It shouldn't be a sustainability goal, but rather uh, a goal uh, owned by the functions that, that can really drive the change. Uh, so, th so that's described in the integrating step. And the final point here is uh, that we recommend companies to uh, where needed and uh, where possible to engage in partnerships. We we know that a company alone or, or a group of companies can only achieve so much and uh, true scale will likely only be reached with multi-stakeholder partnerships and we hope that the SDGs can help bring together uh, partners around uh, this shared set of priorities. Uh, how this will play out in the future, of course, still remains to be seen. Slide 13. Uh, coming to, to the last step on reporting and communicating. Uh, so a company has now identified priorities, set goals on them, uh, is starting to implement and we recommend companies to uh, to report and communicate on um, on the previous steps. So why did you choose to prioritize certain uh, um, certain SDG areas uh, and how are you setting your goals and how are you pro making progress against the goals? A common way of um, of reporting is this um, is this materiality matrix that you see on the left hand side, which uh, on the horizontal X um, shows the significance of economic, environmental, and social impact. So it's sort of uh, what matters to the company, and and vertically is is the influence on stakeholder assessment and decisions. So what's important for stakeholders, and and the bullets can represent the priority areas that were identified in step two. Um, and, and, and possibly also actions taken towards them. And this can be a, an easy to understand way for stakeholders to, to what your company is doing on the SDGs. And we do think um, if companies would, were to report more explicitly on their, on their contribution to, to the SDGs, this will greatly help stakeholders and understand uh, what the company is actually trying to achieve and achieving. At WBCC, we assess our members' report, and I've read my fair share of uh, of sustainability and integrated reports, but it's often due to company jargon and, 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 and technical language difficult to understand what it is that the company is really doing. If only a company would, for instance, say we contribute um, uh, to, to SDG 3.2, then other stakeholders may realize, hey, we're working on the same thing and this is actually an, an important topic for us. And of course, we also know that companies still speak a very different languages from governments and they speak a very different languages from civil society, etc. So we hope that the SDGs can, can bridge that gap um, at least uh, to, to some extent. So that's on reporting and communicating. Uh, slide 14, just uh, by means of wrapping up, um, 
all that I described, uh, the guide, the, 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 the inventory of business indicators, the inventory of business tools, and the overview of, of each SDG can be found on our website, sdgcompass.org. I would encourage you to, um, to have a look on the website, um, uh, read the guide. Um, if, if, if you think it's, it's useful, certainly uh, you're encouraged to apply it to your own company. And uh, I'm also happy to, uh, to receive any feedback or comments you may have on this. So that, that's really um, my presentation. I'm happy to, to take any questions. So that, that's slide uh, 15. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hand the floor back to the, to the moderator. Nina Mikolandiemi. I come from a child rights NGO called Plan International here in Finland. Uh, uh, thank you, Mark, very much for your presentation, and, and it really seems like a comprehensive tool to to navigate through the through maybe the, if I can call it a swamp of hundreds of indicators which are related to to the 17 uh, new sustainable development goals. Um, I also want to thank you for for emphasizing the the possibility of using the common language and shared purpose the SDGs provide to, to more strongly link um, uh, businesses and, and, and governments and NGOs working together towards the SDGs. Um, I was actually wondering, uh, when you were setting up the Compass and the tool and, and, and doing the background research for that, did you uh, already find any, any good examples of, of companies who would have reported against the, the Millennium Development Goals, the earlier set of goals? Uh, or perhaps any any companies or bi companies or businesses who have already used the SDGs um, as a basis for setting their business strategies. That that's an excellent question, and uh, uh, thank you for your your kind words as well. Um, we we did um, do a quick scan uh, on companies reporting to to MDGs. I think Nestle was one of the main examples where they uh, uh, did a publication, but this was already in back in 2010, so some time ago, where they um, explicitly listed all the projects that they were undertaking and the programs that they had in place uh, and, and how they contributed to the MDGs. Um, we also found a good example from a company called Novartis, um, who did essentially the same thing, sort of a matrix where they uh, plotted their actions against the, the MDGs. Um, it's interesting that um, there's one company already called Novozymes um, uh, from Denmark that um, this is the only example I could find at least that uh, has started reporting on the SDGs already uh, based on the, the draft SDGs from the Open Working Group earlier this year where they said, um, you know, these are the SDGs so that we can have a contribution on and, and these are the actions that we're taking. So that's interesting to see. Um, there is some, um, I mean, clearly Unilever is an example of, of a, you know, Paul Palmer, the CEO, is, is heavily pushing this agenda and, and uh, emphasizing business contribution. And they did have some language how, how a number of their programs contributed to the SDGs, but it wasn't yet in a very holistic way. I think it's still early days. Um, um, you know, only last month SDGs were formally adopted, and we will continue to, uh, to disseminate uh, the compass, but or, or any other tool that companies would use, but um, and continue to in encourage companies to do the good things they're doing, uh, report explicitly on the SDGs, and and maybe also use the SDGs as a framework to identify areas where they can even further scale up action. Thank you very much.